Good evening and welcome once again to the Long Island View. I'm Tom Mealy. I am Tommy Moore. Tonight we have a special guest here and we don't want to waste too much time, but we want to get right into it. But before we do, we got some crazy things coming up this week. Uh, what's going on with Woodstock real quick? Woodstock is until August. It's right. Tell me about it. We're going up. My band is going to be performing there on August 14th. It's going to be a three-day festival. Um, it's on Yazga's farm in the forest. Last year we had 83 bands. Amazing time. If you want, if you ever wanted to be at Woodstock, it's as close as you're going to get. So I was at Woodstock, so I was a lucky guy. So uh, we'll be performing there, and then we'll also be performing at the Dancing Cat over in Bethel the same night. So it's going to be a long night for me. Very cool. We got a lot of things happening here at Madhouse TV, and as you know, that all of our shows are now broadcasting via iTunes USA and iEntertainment Radio, which is great. We usually loop them after we're done, but tonight. We have an icon here in the studio, actually coming through teleprompter kind of way, uh, all the way from California. We want to, before we introduce him, um, I want to I want to play uh, just about a uh, a forty five second clip because this was, in my opinion, one of the most amazing parts of this particular show. And I don't want to give it away just yet. This particular show because this guy and our guest tonight. This is something that was very difficult for him to say. Mm -hmm. And in this particular episode, he said it. So Janine, without any further ado, please let's play this clip. And this is our guest for this evening. We'll be right back. Don't forget that Bond's real. I mean, it's not important. <laughs> I figured I'd hang in the barracks and cheer up the guys. Mal, you're not gonna hang these up in any barracks because you're not gonna join the Marines. Just take all this stuff home, okay? But Fonzie, not join? I'm all packed. You told me it was the right thing to do. Look, I know what I told you to do, but when I told you to do that, I was... <laughs> Ralph, I was... <laughs> I was not exactly right. What do you mean, not right? I mean, not right. I don't get you. You mean you were wrong? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Malfa. I was what you just said I was just then, yeah. Wrong? The Fonz wrong? Malf, look. <laughs> there is a first time for everything, huh? I don't understand, Fonz. How could you be wrong about a thing like that? Look, I don't understand it myself, Ralph. I don't understand it myself. I was under a lot of pressure. I was under a lot of cars, too. Two of them were Etzels. Maybe the pressure was getting to me. I don't know. No, Fonzie. You might have been under a lot of cars, but you weren't wrong. You were right. Oh. Everything you said about me was true. I'm useless around here. I gotta join. Everybody hates me. I'll see you. Mouth. I didn't tell you why I was, uh... Wrong? I didn't tell you why you shouldn't join the Marines. Why shouldn't I go, Fonz? I mean, tell me. Because if you join the Marines, I'm gonna miss you. You're always telling me to get lost and to sit on it. You even told me I was useless. Ralphie, don't you know when I'm joshing? Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to introduce here, live via Skype from California, New York, Mr. Donnie Most. Donnie, welcome to Madhouse TV. Hey, it's me with you. How are you? We have a little bit of a, uh, an issue there with the Skype. We're going to get him back. Donnie, can you hear us? I hear you, but could you not hear me? Yep, there you go. Donnie, uh, that clip was, 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 was unbelievable. Tell us a little about that clip real quick. Well, I remember that show very well because um, probably, you know, once or twice every season, they would um, do a show that would feature my character. You know, I mean, because usually it's centered around uh, everybody to some degree, but usually Fonzie and Richie and... Um, with the mainstays, of course, but um, a couple shows each year, they would do something that centered around me. In that particular season, um, I remember that show where it was all around my character who uh, who got dumped by his, his girlfriend, and, and he and he felt useless, and and I was going to go join the French Foreign Legion, but and then Fonzie talked me into no, that's stupid, join the Marines, and <laughs> that's what that was all about, and. Um, 
it was it was great great fun doing that and you know doing some of those scenes with Henry um, you know it was uh, priceless priceless and look back at those uh, with very fond memories for sure I uh, I know that um, you guys and I don't want to just you know stay with happy days because you have done so much with your career even after happy days but I know that you guys were really the picture of a family, and I know that with us tonight is his musical director, Willie... Uh, Scapitone. Scapitone. I, I, I knew I was going to screw that up. Willie, Scott, Willie, thanks for being on the show tonight. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, Donnie has done so much with his career uh, other than Happy Days. I know that we talked briefly, and Donnie, that was truly a family atmosphere. Would you agree? Without a doubt. Um you know, the, the cast that the exec producers assembled for that show was just, uh, they did a fantastic job of putting together a group of people. I, I don't know whether they, you know, were psychic or, or how they did it, but we, we fit together, you know, so perfectly um, on camera, off camera. We got along incredibly well. We, we worked well. We respected each other as actors and supported each other and grew to love each other, and we did all kinds of things off the camera together. So I think that translated to the success of the show as well. Um, I know and, that you're um, uh, Tom Bosley, and I hope it's okay to bring him up. I know that uh, you know before Tom died, um, I understand you spent a lot of time with him. Um, what was your relationship like with Tom? Uh, Tom, Tom was kind of like you know the father figure to all of us when we were doing the show. Um, you know, he would advise us on all kinds of matters, um, uh, maybe not everything, but, but certain matters, you know, um, it was a time when we were all uh, pretty young and, and just, and then with the success of the show, we were in a position to go out and we started buying our first, you know, our homes and he was giving us advice on financial advice, mortgages and, you know, and, and he was great to talk to and I looked up to Tom a lot. Because he had been a star, you know, I knew him as uh, being a famous star from Broadway. He played um, uh, Fiorello LaGuardia in the, and won the Tony for a musical called Fiorello. Huge, uh, big hit back in the uh, 50s. And I'd seen him in the movie. So, it, you know, when I knew I was going to be working with him and Ron Howard, it, it was like, it was surreal to me. You know, it was very surreal. But, but Tom was a great, great guy. And I did get to... Um, spent some time with him t towards the end because I knew um, knew he was sick and um, he was living in Palm Springs and my wife and I we drove out to Palm Springs to visit with him and so I'm really glad I got to see him and talk with him and spend time before he did pass on which was you know very sad for everybody. Hey Donnie, I wanted. To, I was just. I'm, I'm curious. Um, I'm actually. A, I think I believe I'm a year and four days older than you. You're August eighth, yeah. right? August eighth. August eighth. Yes, I am. I'm August fourth, but I'm a, a I'm a year older. So we we come from the same place, same time. And um, I was just wondering because I'll tell you the truth, I was a massive to this day, only because I I am a family guy. I have six grandsons that live with me. I believe in family, and I I got to tell you, to this day, I still think that uh, um, the Andy Griffith Show was one of the best shows around. And I wonder if you did watch that, because you probably, you know, being the same age, you probably did. And so you kind of knew uh, Ron growing up, I would I would assume, also, right? Yeah, it's funny that you bring that up, because um, the connection goes way beyond that, in that um, we're not, Ron and I are very close in age. And, um, you know, I had red hair um, when I was young. All the way through Happy Days, but it, as a kid, um, and I was like, in the show, I act very much like Ron did. I looked very much like him right. to the point where people would come up to me on the street and call me, think that I was him, and call me Opie. And that started <laughs> to become sort of a nickname, you know, where people called me Opie. So, so I grew up to some degree living with that. So then you can imagine, then of course, I saw Ron and met other things throughout, you know, American Graffiti and, and other things, but you can imagine what it was like for me when I all of a sudden was in a situation where now I was going to be working with him. Um, and I went up and I, the first time I met him, I was so excited and I went over and I was, 
I was very exuberant, maybe a little overly so, overly <laughs> zealous, and I and I was telling him this story, but you know, I know I think he looked at me like I was crazy, and he was like, oh my God, who is this nut that I'm working with now? You know, <laughs> but um, but but we we came to be you know great friends, and but but yes, I did. I was aware of you know the, that show and and um, and the character he played and. And Ron, of course. And two yeah, other things I want to mention. Um, number one, don't you agree, I'm sure you do, that they could sure use shows like this nowadays? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I More family-orientated shows? I, I definitely agree. And yeah, wherever, I, wherever I go when we're traveling and doing personal appearances, and um, that's the biggest comment I get. Yeah. from so many people it's, it's you know they need shows like this yeah and there I mean, was just recently something i was I, uh, that somebody kept was tweeting and i kept seeing t retweets and retweets and retweets of uh, we need more shows like happy days i mean exactly what you were saying i agree um, i agree it's 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 so prevalent in in the uh, sort of social media that i've been hearing and and <laughs> when i meet people i hear that yeah and these reality shows i really think it's not really helping our youth but I also want to say that I, 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 I am still amazed that in the time that the show was on, that time week after week after week, you guys had 36 million viewers a show on an average. Yeah, that was probably an average. And then there were some shows when, you know, oh, when yeah. we were the number one show in the country and it was really crazy. I think there were times when we had 40 to 50 million Absolutely, viewers. absolutely. That's I think a, because you know there were only three networks then, yeah. and um, and if you were the big hit show, you you had you know a good portion, like one out of every four people in the country were, were watching you. I mean, the, it's staggering when yeah. you think about it. Yeah, I, I would think that too. Yeah. That like you were saying before, people probably welcome you as a family member because I mean, like if I would see you on the street, I would almost like feel like I've known you all my life because. You, you were part of everyone's family. I mean, you really were. I mean, it was. How does that make you feel, Donnie? Um, it, I feel, it, it makes me feel great now. I think at the time, it was hard to really comprehend that. You know, as a, it was early, I was 20 when I started the show, and then when it became really huge, about our third season, I, it, it, it was hard to really um, wrap your head around what that meant, and it, it was too big. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was just too big, and um, uh, I, I think it was like being in the twilight zone. Yeah, I can but I, imagine. I think I have a better understanding now and appreciation, and 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 do. Uh, I, I'm very proud to be a part of that show, and and uh, to this day, Willie, you know, Willie knows this. I talk about it. it. It's hard for me sometimes. I forget, and and I don't understand that why people. You know, it's just. It, 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 like I said, it's just too uh, too hard to get wrap your head around something that big sometimes. You know, uh, we uh, just to give you an idea, and then I want to get into what you're doing now because I know you're involved in so many things now. But uh, you know, we started Madhouse TV, and I, and I understand the the issue of being surreal sometimes. Of obviously, here at this studio, Tommy and I started it not too long ago, and within a very short period of time, we are now the one of the largest internet broadcasting studios in the world. We broadcast yeah. in over 200 countries, and yeah. you know we really get the message out, and we're really proud of what we built. But you know, be that as it may, you, Willie, I met Willie uh, when he was doing the um, the event out there at the theater in in, in Brookhaven, uh, where I met you, and then we went out to dinner several times uh, with you, Donnie, and also Willie. But let's talk about what you're doing now. I mean, everybody knows you from Happy Days, but you know, there's another side to Donnie most. Uh, you live in California. I understand you got two beautiful daughters that are, uh, I think, in college now, uh, or out of college. Out of college. Now. Out of college. I think they were in college when you were here in Brookhaven. But what are you involved with now? What is Donnie Most doing today? Okay. Well, um, still, still acting. Um, I, I just uh, about a month ago, two months ago, I did a film. What impact? Michael Adler had a really good part. Um, I had been doing a recurring role on Glee uh, in the last few years, and other independent films. I've directed three independent films, uh, and I have several that I'm developing right now, hoping to get them off the ground. And um, and then 
but but more the the highest priority right now or lately about it about a year and a half ago i decided to go back to my first love which was something i did before i was acting which was singing and seeing the, the kind of music that i've loved my whole life is the great american songbook the jazz standards you know the, the big band sinatra bobby darren that kind of music and um and i did it when i was 15 years old up in the catskill mountains uh one summer professionally and um and about a year and a half ago i decided i needed to go back and do that again and do it in a way that i really want i've always wanted to do put together the the, the set list the kind of songs with the arrangements and the musicians and i worked with willie willie had um contacted me some years ago back when you what you referred to 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 work with him on a show he put together a doo-wop show for me to host and perform in and um I had such a great experience with him that when I decided that I wanted to put together this show, I thought of him to be my musical director. So, you know, we just, we, we jumped into it and we put together the show and we started doing it. Um, in July, it'll be a year. And, and I've been doing shows all over the country, uh, New York, Long Island as well. And because um, uh, we did I did a, a 54 below in New York City a couple of times, and um, and I'm coming to Long Island on the 25th of July at Theater Three in uh, Port Jefferson to do to do my show. I'm also going to be at the Iridium in New York City on July 7th. So um, and I've been doing it out in L.A. and Catalina. I mean in um, Chicago. So I'm having a blast. This is the kind of thing I've been wanting to do. For a long, long time. I don't know why I waited this long. I guess I was busy doing other stuff. But also, I think that this kind of music, you know, became more and more sort of fashionable and back in vogue, where people were liking it, people were being exposed to it by people, by singers like Michael Bublé and 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 Diana Krall and Tony Bennett, Lady Gaga, and Rod Stewart. You know, on and on. And um, and it's the music that I've always had such passion for and I decided this is the perfect time for me to do it and we're just having the greatest time let me uh, let me let me tell you something funny that uh, you know we have a show here at, at the at the studio Madhouse TV uh, with a, a fellow by the name of Mickey B and he is he keeps all these alive here on Long Island we've had and have had the the fortunate opportunity to have Lenny Coco in the chimes the mystics uh, Bonnie Pointer uh, has been here. Uh, Tommy, uh, the Duops, everybody. Uh, if you, the, the anybody, Duprees, the Duprees, uh, they have all come through here and have performed here. And we try to keep Duop music alive. We love it. We've got a lot of friends. Unfortunately, we just lost Lenny Coco uh, last month. Yeah. Um, Great guy. He, he passed away. Great guy. And uh, and it, 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 it's it's uh, it's a music that I don't think will ever die. And uh, we have a, a clip, if you don't mind, I'm going to show real quick. Here's Donnie singing in concert. Can we play that clip? Yeah, which is... <laughs> um, anyway, this was a song that was won the Grammy for Record of the Year in 1959. And and I will be snapping my fingers to this as long as I'm singing. Oh, the shark, babe, has such teeth, dear, and he shows them pearly white, just a jackknife. As old Mag Heath babe, and he keeps it out of sight. You know when that shark bites with his teeth, babe, scarlet billows start to spread. Fancy gloves, though, as old Mag Heath babe, so there's never. Never a trace of red. Let's let the band go now. Now if you hear about Louis Miller, he disappeared, babe. 
have to draw it out All of his hard-earned cash And now Mac, he spends just like a sailor Could it be a boy's done something rash? Ah, Jenny Dyer, ho, ho, yes, who you tawdry Who is the lot in ya? We're cutting that short because we only have a few minutes left and we want to spend as much time as we can. Um, Donnie is going to be here live, by the way, in the Madhouse Studios on July 5th for a show with Tommy and I on the Long Island View. Um, Donnie, let's talk a little bit about um, what you're doing here in New York when you come in July. Can we go over that again so we can let our viewers know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have uh, three shows coming up. Uh, the first one is July 7th at uh, the club, uh, The Iridium, which is in New York City. Uh, that's a Tuesday night, July 7th, uh, I think 8 o'clock show. And um, I, hear, I hear it's a great, great venue, and it I'm is. really looking forward to playing it. And, uh, you know, Willie, we'll, we'll have a great band. We have seven-piece band with, you know, trumpet, trombone, and, and, and Willie plays a mean saxophone, that's for sure. And, um, and, and then on July... Five days later, July 12th, I'm out in Asbury Park at McLoon Supper Club. Uh, that's, uh, I think it might be a 7 o'clock show. It's a Sunday night, July uh, 12th. And then the 25th of July, uh, right there in Long Island in Port Jefferson at Theater 3. Uh, it's a Saturday night. So um, that's, uh, it's exciting. I'm really looking forward to, to playing, uh, you know, in the tri-state area and and there'll be some, I have a lot of old family and friends that are still in that, you know, I grew, I grew up in Brooklyn, so, so I, a lot of, uh, it'll, I'll get to have a reconnection with a lot of people. And then hoping a lot of, you know, new people come to see me that, uh, that want to check out me doing this kind of music because people aren't aware that I do it. I'm trying to spread that word and, and I love sharing it with people and, and sort of surprising them, you know? Well, we certainly don't have 50 million people watching tonight, but I can tell you that uh, pretty close to 30 or 40,000 will know that you're going to be here in the New York metropolitan area. So we really look forward uh, to not only having you here live in the studio, but also the performances. And Willie, um, anything you want to say before I, we leave? I wanted to ask Willie a question. Sure. Yeah. Are we going to get Donnie to do a couple tunes in here live when he comes? Well, uh, Okay, we'll have to talk about that, huh, Donnie? <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're ready for you. We're we'll ready to, for you. Yeah, we'd have to figure that out. We'd have I mean, to figure that out. Just bring a track okay, and we'll, we'll go. We'll talk about it and we'll, we'll have to get back to you on that. And we have some great backing tracks. So, um, Willie, I know that um, when we met you uh, back in Brookhaven uh, and, and Donnie was out here, how I mean, how does this make you feel? I mean, you know, you're 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 playing with an icon here. I mean, he, as you can see from the video, an incredible singer. Tell us what you're thinking. Well, Donnie is is, is an, an accomplished musician. Besides being a singer, he uh, he really understands how to sing. He's he's really really great at making a set list. He knows great music, and uh, and he and he really gets it. A lot of guys that are actors that want to sing are basically sh shower singers who, you know, want to give a, get a crack at singing. But Donnie's a true singer, really, really pure voice. And for me to be playing with him is just uh, an incredible honor. Uh, he, he called me to, to be music director for his show, and I couldn't say f yes fast enough. It was really, uh, really, really an honor, That's and cool. I just... We ju we're just going to take this thing as, as, as far as we can take it. Well, you're playing some nice... I mean, the Iridium, I've done a few shows from there. Yeah. You know, we did a, a benefit for Walter Trout there. But, and it's it's a really, really great place to see someone. Oh, it's a beautiful it's, club. And yeah. Ron Sturm is a great guy. Uh, and Theater 3, another beautiful theater, too. Really. Yeah, we're looking so forward to it. we'll have some good gigs. Yeah, uh, Port Jefferson is, is a great place. Donnie, have you ever been down to Port Jefferson? Um, the, the only time I think uh, Willie took me... Wasn't that where one of the re yeah, yeah, rehearsal? We, yeah, we had a rehearsal there. Yeah, we. So I got to see it, you know, real briefly. But I, I'm really looking forward to. I hear from Willie that during the summertime, it's it's a whole different world there, and uh, 
and uh, you know, a, a great place to be. So uh, I think we'll have a lot of fun, and uh, and I hear it's a really nice theater. So I I, I love playing some of those um, old theaters, uh, the ones that um, I don't know. I seem to to uh, when when I was doing the tour back in in the '90s, I was doing a tour, the national tour of Greece. And we hit a lot of these old theaters in different cities. Some of them were like historic, almost landmarks, and I just love them, and I love performing in them. So, looking forward to it. Well, you know, we look forward to having you come here. I want to, you know, thank you for uh, being our guest tonight on the Long Island View, and uh, we look forward uh, to seeing you uh, very soon here, uh, coming up in July. I know that I've heard Willie, I've heard your band play before. They're amazing, and. Uh, Donnie, we want to uh, you know have a very safe trip out here to the East Coast. We will well, talk to you, you when you get here, and thanks so much for being part of Madhouse TV tonight. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me, and, and look forward to seeing you in person on the fifth. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. Take care. Thank Ladies you, Don. and gentlemen, that was Mr. Donnie Mo skyping in live from uh, California, and as Donnie indicated. He will be here live, Tommy, in the Madhouse. I think we're going to get him up to do a couple tunes. You think? And we get Willie to go. You think? We're going to have to figure that out. <laughs> it's easy. You know what? It's uh, easy. We're going to figure it uh, out. But in any event, um, I want to thank you for another edition of the Long Island View. I'm Tom Mealy saying good night. I am Tommy Ma. Have a blessed week. We'll talk to you next week.
Thank you.